Hello everyone, my name is Yan Yang. Uh, I'm presenting the work Complex Event Detection Using Data-Driven Concepts, and this is done jointly with uh, Dr. Mubarak Shah. So this work is mostly uh, motivated by the trackweight computation during the last year. So uh, in the trackweight uh, 2011 data set, there are 15 uh, complex events in it, and the, the task is uh, given a video, we want to automatically find out what is the event appears in this video. So um, here we show seven complex events out of 15, and each row here belongs to one complex event, and we sh uh, show the frames randomly choosing from the um, two videos. So uh, as we can see that the challenge here is the data is very diverse. It is uh, recorded um, from different illumination changes and from different viewpoints. Also, um, for example, uh, the grooming animal, like uh, grooming a cat and washing a dog, both belong to the uh, grooming animals. So um, by complex event, we mean that um, it can be de uh, decom decomposed into a different low-level concepts such as uh, the birthday party can have um, the happy song as an audio uh, concept and uh, um, the people clapping, a uh, uh, person clapping and person dancing as an action concept and the crowded uh, scene as a scene concept. So the common approaches to solve this kind of problem has um, include like using the handcraft, handcraft features. So in the beginning of this competition, we have tried different kind of low-level features, such as the MFCC for the audio, and uh, C features for the scene, and the STIP for the actions, for the motion features, and uh, which is followed with a bag of word framework. Also, we have uh, uh, manually annotated a, a 62 action concept from the tracklit uh, data set. And here we show the list of the 62 action concepts such as the person walking, person march, people um, marching, animal eating, and the vehicle moving. So we um, annotate this kind of concept data set, and uh, we train uh, 62 concept detectors, and using the concept, concept detector score to improve the event recognition. But there are several challenges in this kind of task. So first, um, the question is, we don't know what kind of hand design feature is the best one among like the, a bunch of um, features has been proposed in the in the past and uh, based on the concept detectors we already have like we have the usf 50 concept detectors but um, this concept detector does not generalize very well to the track data dataset and it is very hard and expensive for us to uh, collect the, uh, this um, concept uh, data set and uh, to a larger scale and also to other modalities. And the question comes to us is that, um, is it possible that we can discover some semantic concept directly from the track data instead of um, human manu ma manually to annotate the data? So uh, we propose a bottom-up unsupervised learning method. We learn the low-level features using the topography independent component analysis uh, from the row pixels. And um, uh, we later we use the, um, the deep belief net to discover the concept from the, uh, from the uh, TSA features. And then we represent the videos using a sparse um, uh, coding method. And uh, the advantage of this framework is that um, it can automatically discover the low-level features and the concepts from the three modalities. And um, it does not need hand design features. Also, the um, concept detectors are not required. And uh, we use a sparse representation of the videos in terms of the discovered concepts. So the flowchart is show, uh, of this method is shown here. So given a long video, we first divide it into short clips. And then we use the TSA learning to learn the audio features, scene features, and motion features directly from the raw signal. After that, we uh, represent each clip using the traditional bag of word histogram representation. And since this representation is in a, like, is a high dimensional, you know, high dim dimensional space. So we further use the deep belief net to learn the 
a more compact code of the clip representation. And further, we follow with, the, uh, follow with k-means to cluster the clips into different kind of group based on the low level, um, based on the um, low dimensional representation. And then each video can be represented using the occurrence of the con data-driven concept. And since the data-driven concept is very noisy, so we further use the sparse coding to find the set of bases and finally use the coefficient of the bases to represent the videos. So instead of uh, using the popular hand design features such as SIFT MFCC, uh, we propose to use the topography independent component analysis to learn the features. Um, it is the data-driven features which directly learn from the data, and uh, we can just directly use this simple network to all three modalities from the audio, scene, and action. And uh, because it is um, optimizing a complex function, so uh, the computational speed is much faster than other method. So the TI, the TICA is a, a two-layer network. The first layer, the input of the first layer, is the um, flattened image or flattened patches, that, uh, if we consider it's learned from the scene information. And the second layer is basically um, the activation is a dot product of the input and with the weight matrix W, which is we uh, want to learn. And the uh, second layer's output is uh, basically it's a pooling uh, layer and it's a simply pool from the first layer's unit. And this is a, a fixed, uh, like, before we, uh, when we design this kind of network. So to learn this um, weight matrix W, we basically min minimize the summation of this uh, top layer's uh, activation, which is P. And uh, so then, um, given the new 2D patches, given a new 2D patch, uh, the uh, activation of the top layer will be uh, sparse. So then we detect out what kind of feature it is. And we can treat this uh, weight W matrix as the filters also. So here we show the learned filters from uh, three modalities. And this figure is showing the 24 filters uh, learned from audio. And the total we, we have is 600. So we, we find out like uh, different filters is capturing different um, frequency of the audio signal and also the different um, amplitude of the signal. And here is the 2D image, uh, uh, 2D image filters. We show 144 out of 600 also. And uh, we find out, because we learned this based on the color uh, image patches, so uh, we find out like it's some of it learned uh, different kind of the edges with our different orientations, and some capture the color information. And uh, this is the uh, 3D motion filters we learn out, and we show 12 of it. And each row here is uh, um, correspond to one filters, like one 3D filters. And some is capturing the uh, different transition rotation information during the time. So after we learn this uh, set of uh, features, uh, filters from different modalities, we can compute the features using the learned fi filters. So basically, the features is a vector of the filters response. And then we follow with using the k-means to quantize the features into, uh, into a set of codebook uh, using the self-assignment. And then each clip can be further represented as a histogram, uh, like the traditional bag of word representation. So um, as uh, we mentioned before, the concepts are intermediate representation of the complex scenes or events. And the traditional way is to manually annotate the data and train a set of concept detectors. But here we are trying to explore, explore uh, how we can unsupervised learn the data-driven concept. And we propose to use the deep leaf net, which is a set, uh, several layers of the RBMs, uh, which is uh, restricted Boltzmann machines. And the, the advantage of this method it is, um, since um, it is uh, data-driven, um, like a classroom method, so we can achieve unlimited number of the concepts. And we don't need the manual annotation. And we, uh, the byproduct of it is, uh, we can reduce the dimension of the clip limitations. Also, at the same time, preserve the original distributions of the clips. 
So the advantage of the deep belief net or other manifold learning method is by stacking several layers of the RBM, it can expose the low dimensional structure progressively. And it does not based on the Euclidean distance. And uh, the, B the DBN has shown that um, it can achieve uh, the task of denoising very well. And uh, it is a probabilistic generative method. So in our task, given the histogram uh, representation of the clips, so we build three layers of the RBM and we train the uh, RBM layer-wise from the bottom to top. And basically, the, um, the lower layer's output will serve as the input uh, of the upper layers. And finally, we can, uh, through the um, output of the most upper layers, we can get a dimensionality reduced compact representation for the clips. And we use this representation to cluster the clips into different groups. And each group is a, a, a um, is, uh, correspond to different, uh, each group corresponds to different um, data-driven concept. Here we show the uh, data-driven thin concept. And each row here is the, um, a data-driven uh, concept. And we show the eight, top eight candidates of it. So um, we find out like uh, some is very mean meaningful, like the, uh, the first row here, we capture some like green grass out of thin. And uh, we also have the tears he as the second row here. But some is really hard to tell what is, it is about. Like the last row, uh, we can really, we cannot tell like what's this thing concept about. So um, as showed before, the data-driven concept is very noisy. So we further propose to use the sparse coding to learn a set of uh, sparse coefficient to represent the videos instead of directly using the bag of concept representation. So given the histogram, uh, given the histogram of the con uh, representation of the videos, we want to learn a set of uh, bases with their coefficient. And at the same time, we want to uh, make the coefficient very sparse. And we use the coefficient as the final representation of the videos. And this captures some like context information. And it is very robust to the weak initial detection of the concepts. And after, getting, uh, after uh, obtaining the um, coefficient, and we will just use the k square SVM to, for the event, uh, event detection or the classification. So here, uh, I'll show some experimental results. So we first compare our learn features with other handcrafted features, such as MCC, SIFT, and dollar, also the combination of it. So we first uh, test our um, low-level features on the UCF YouTube data site. And we can see that um, on this data site, the MBH, which is motion boundary histogram, uh, handcrafted features, performed the very best, around 83%. And the next one is the combination of the Tika features uh, of uh, 2D scene and 3D motion features. And further, we test um, the method on the 62 action concept, on, uh, which we collected from the TrackVay 2011. And we found out like um, the 3D motion features perform much better than the MBH features on this data set. And uh, also, we tested on the uh, TrackVay 2011 data set which uh, has 11, uh, 15 events. And uh, we can see that the combination of the uh, learn features from three modalities is much, much better than the uh, hand design features, uh, the combination of the hand design features. So somehow we can conclude from this uh, experiment, um, when our data become more complex, it's better to learn features rather than to uh, design the features. And here, um, we draw the curves of uh, using different number of the concept. And um, the y-axis is here is showing the event uh, detection accuracy. So um, the blue curve is the uh, learn uh, TSE features from the 1D audio signal. And uh, um, the right one is the scene concept, which also use the TSE features. And uh, the third one, uh, this green one, is the uh, uh, motion concept. Also, uh, this purple one is the combination of the three concept. Uh, 
And here we also show if we use the STIP as a low-level features, the result is now better than the learn features. And here this um, Orange, this dot is here is showing that if we use the 62 hand-picked concept and the event detection result is better when, uh, than the data-driven concept if we have a, the same number of the concept, the data-driven concept. However, if we increase in the number to around like uh, 3,000, then this uh, uh, event detection result is much better than hand-picked one. Also, we compare the uh, deep belief net with other manifold learning methods, such as PC, RLE, and the EGMAP. Um, as we can see that around like 1,000, uh, this x-axis is the number of the hidden units. So around 1,000, uh, the DBN performed the, the very best. And, um, uh, and PC is the next one. Also, we uh, compare the, uh, if we use the, um, if we learn the data-driven concept uh, using the uh, audio and scene and motion features uh, in the, at the very beginning and compare with, we first learn the concept from three modalities separately and then do the, um, and then do the event uh, detections. So we can see that um, the late fusion is much better than early fusions. And here we also compare the remutation of the using the back of uh, concept versus the sparse remutation for the videos. And uh, in average, the sparse remutation is around 2 to 3 percent better than the back of concept. And finally, we show the um, comparison of our proposed uh, method versus the traditional baseline method, which is the combination of the hand design features, SIFT, STIP, and the MFCC. So uh, in average, we can uh, approve, uh, uh, we can improve from 51% to 67%. So uh, to conclude, we propose a framework for automatically discovering the low-level features and concepts from three modalities. And uh, we do not need hand design features, also the concept, uh, the concept detectors. And uh, the take-home messages are, so for the uh, complex data sets, it's better to learn the features rather than uh, using the hand design features. And um, when the uh, concept detector is not accurate, uh, the large number of the concept helps the event uh, recognition. And thank you. Uh, uh, I'm ready to take questions.